Hey there, thanks for joining me on Tropical Weather Impact on your Wednesday, August the 20th. I'm meteorologist Peyton Malone here in New Orleans. We got a lot to break down. We've got Hurricane Aaron, which has been restrengthening this morning. We'll talk about the latest with the impacts for parts of our East Coast here in the United States. We're also still tracking two additional areas out in the deep tropics, but I'll tell you why I'm not terribly concerned with them. We'll break down where I think they're headed and how much I think they could organize over the next couple of days as we head towards the end of this week. But let's start with a wide overview. That's Hurricane Aaron. It's a cat two this morning. We'll talk about why it could become a cat three here pretty soon. And also these are your two other areas we're watching. That's Invest 99 and this is just an unorganized tropical wave that the Hurricane Center still says probably We'll try to organize here by the end of this week. Let's dive into the latest with Hurricane Aaron. This is the 10 a.m. advisory and 11 a.m. Eastern advisory. It's a 110 mile per hour hurricane. That's back up. Notice our direction of movement now is more north, and so we finally have seen more of that northerly direction. All things go into plan here, although you can just see how large Aaron is. In fact, the latest satellite data shows from one edge of the storm to the other, from the edge of the upper level clouds, from one side to the other, you're talking about and about 800 miles, even some of these upper level cirrus clouds even further. This would take up a large portion of the Gulf if it was actually in it. So I just wanted to put it in scope here on how large Hurricane Aaron is and how much of a bullet we are dodging here in the United States. If this was making landfall somewhere in the US, we would have big problems. Even though it's only a cat two, the size of this thing, it's just amazing how much it has grown over the past couple of days and how mature of a storm it is it has become. All right, so so far the hurricane hunters are in there right now and what they're finding right now is obviously Aaron's a large hurricane. Winds extend 90 miles away from the center. Um, excuse me, hurricane force winds extend 90 miles away from the center and tropical storm force winds extend 265 miles away from the center and it's only going to get bigger and bigger. So we do anticipate this to continue to grow bigger and bigger. To put that in perspective, Hurricane Katrina's tropical storm force winds were about 200 miles away from the center. So this thing is larger with regard to that, that the tropical storm force winds are just so far away from where uh, the core of this hurricane. And by the way, this is current satellite. You can see that it's developing an inner core after losing it yesterday, thanks to some wind shear. Uh, it's regaining its organization, and this thing is probably on its way to becoming a category three here pretty soon. And that's what the Hurricane Center is calling for. Now, because this thing is giant, we've got tropical storm warnings up the Carolina coast from uh, the Outer Banks up towards at least the coastal areas in Virginia, all the way up to look New Jersey here off Atlantic City. We've got tropical storm warnings that are going to include the open waters there. So inland, probably probably no tropical storm, but right there along the coast, things are going to get rocking and rolling here in the next. 24 to 48 hours. Here's the official track. There's been no significant changes. We've got it back up to a category three by this afternoon into tonight. Notice passing off the coast. Now it's this is the core of the hurricane. We're tracking with our cone here and remember those tropical storm force winds will extend all the way out to the coastal areas here and that's why we have tropical storm warnings. The storm will continue to lift northeast as we head into tomorrow passing south of Long Island and New England, but still a large system. So gusty winds there and rough seas. And then by this weekend, we finally have it pushing out into the north central Atlantic. Here we are Sunday morning as it gets wrapped up in the upper level winds and races quickly out to sea. Let's talk about how big this thing is. Uh, once again, the tropical storm force winds currently extend 265 miles away from the center, both directions here. And so you're talking about a massive, massive wind field. This is later tonight and into tomorrow. You can see those tropical storm conditions skirting uh, coastal areas of North Carolina. This is also when you have storm surge for those areas. Water getting pushed inland by maybe two to four feet is what we're forecasting with storm surge. Watch the wind field. This is incredible how big it gets. Here we are Thursday night, so tomorrow night. Let's put an estimate on how large this wind field has grown. You can see from one side to the other, you're talking tropical storm force winds 550 miles across this hurricane sitting just south of Long Island. Now that means it's going to be windy out there in Long Island. Once you get out towards Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, things are really going to be howling and the seas are going to be dangerous. You can't get in the water here for the next few days all the way from Florida up to New England. I mean, the entire eastern seaboard, it's going to be dangerous here. Even if you don't have direct impacts from the hurricane, 
the seas are going to be churning. The rip current risk is real. And remember, rip currents are one of the biggest weather killers there, there is. And so we really can't overlook the uh, problems that we get from rip currents. And then again, this thing just massive as it passes just south of Newfoundland by this weekend, still producing winds over tropical storm force. The other big problem here are the waves. This thing has already been producing significant waves for the Outer Banks. That's only going to increase. Look at this. This buoy that's currently sitting uh, hundreds of miles away from the center of Aaron. Let's estimate it here. 300 miles away. We're getting 18 foot waves already. And so that's what's going to be crashing inland here for the Carolinas, uh, the Outer Banks. And it's only going to get worse as we go into tonight. So I think the worst of your beach erosion, your flooding along the outer banks here in surrounding areas will really start to ramp up tonight. Here we are Thursday. I mean, we're talking after midnight here. You've got waves crashing 10 to 25 feet right off the coast here. Extreme beach erosion for these areas. All right, that's why there's evacuations. You got to take these evacuations seriously. There's only a couple ways in here and there's only a couple ways out. So get out while you can. Those waves will be crashing as we go through tonight and then Friday. You can see there the waves just take up a large portion of the Western Atlantic uh, for Long Island and those surrounding areas. You can see their seas are anywhere from 10 to 15 feet just off the coast of New York, off the coast of New Jersey, and then up into the New England area. It's not as bad, but you know, seas are still going to be quite rough up there. And then off the coast of Canada, too, you're talking 10 to about 14 foot waves through the weekend. So those winds, uh, the worst winds, this is not going to be a big wind storm in regard to catastrophic damage from winds. It's not going to happen with this type of path. That's your worst of your winds. But remember, those tropical storm force wind gusts over 39 to 40 miles an hour are in the pink here. Those will easily happen for coastal areas. Look at uh, the, um, the outer banks there. You can see once we get into tonight, we've got winds gusting 50, 60. I wouldn't be surprised to see some 70 mile per hour sporadic wind gusts somewhere in the outer banks area, and that'll be the worst of the winds here for the United States. But look at this as we go into Thursday night and Friday, the winds are going to be howling along the coastal areas from New York to Nantucket, the Cape out here. You've got winds easily blowing 50 miles an hour, so it's going to be nasty up here towards New England as well. This is just a massive, massive wind field, and I really think this is going to catch some people off guard up here around Long Island once you get out here to Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and um, Provincetown. A lot, a lot of people up there right now. Winds are going to be blowing later Friday, Thursday night into Friday morning, and so don't let that catch you off. Uh, off guard too much. So that's what's going on with Hurricane Aaron. Luckily, we don't have a direct landfall, but it's a big hurricane. Let's talk about our two other areas and why I'm not terribly stressed about these at the moment in the United States. I'm certainly not stressed about them in the Gulf. This one may grab your attention. Thing with it is, it is a broad tropical wave. The Winds are extremely elongated here. Now it's a defined wave, but this is going to take some time to come together. This whole wave is going to travel northeast, excuse me, northwest and start to gain some latitude. So there's Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands. I could see us having a depression trying to form by Thursday or Friday here if this can consolidate, but all signs point to that thing going out to sea. And so right now I'm not terribly concerned with it in the US. I think Bermuda may need to watch it. So that's what's going on with that tropical wave. This is Invest 99. You know, you look at this on satellite, this is probably as close as it's going to be to becoming a depression or a tropical storm. Now, luckily, it does not have a great environment ahead of it. And so while it looks healthy now, I think in the next 48 hours, watch this, our two models, the GFS and European, show it there. Thursday, front poof, it's gone. And this thing's going to have a lot of dry air and some wind shear to battle here. And so hopefully that dry air completely kills it off. So while that wave travels south, maybe dives into South America, there's probably not going to be much of it left once it actually reaches. So not terribly concerned with that. We'll watch it, though, for some of our northern countries here in South America. Now, the same token, that's dissipating. Here's what's happening with this tropical wave. Notice Friday morning into Friday afternoon. We've got something trying to spin up just north of the islands, but look at the out to sea options here trailing behind Aaron. So one thing Aaron's actually doing to help us out with this feature is we've got a weakness in the ridge because Aaron's flying on through because it's moving a little slower than we initially anticipated and that's your out to sea option. So notice Friday, Saturday, the ridge is still very weak out here and that allows it to curve. We've also got this giant trough digging down over the east United States and so that's why I think I'm at least feeling okay about it. We'll keep an eye on it to make sure it goes accordingly, but that's how we're looking at it at the moment. Again, that other tropical wave gets blown around by dry air, and this is the steering pattern next week. If anything is weak down there, it's getting shoved down into northern parts of central 
America. So that's where we stand. Overall, for the August 20th, I'm feeling okay here in the United States. Bigger impacts with waves and things along the eastern seaboard, but with regard to a major hurricane, we don't have major wind or rain impacts from Aaron. Also, this is August 20th. This is when um, Dr. Mill Gray up at Colorado State University would ring his bell because August 20th and beyond is when we typically see the majority of hurricane season. The bigger activity, the bigger storms are mostly after August 20th, but I think we're going to get a bit of a lull here without any substantial development through the end of August. That's a great sigh of relief here on the northern Gulf where we're always holding our breath in August, but I think we're going to start off at least September on the quieter side. We will see what things look like as we head into September. Remember, we always take these things week by week, day by day is a good rule of thumb here as we get into the peak of the season. But so far, I'm feeling pretty good here along the northern Gulf. That's going to do it here for your tropical weather impact for your Wednesday. I'll see you right back here tomorrow for your Thursday update with the latest of Aaron and whatever what else is also, what else is going on with those two other tropical waves in the Atlantic. Thanks for joining me today.